Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So a few days before Christmas, as I finished teaching my last class before the holidays, I decided to have afternoon tea with my mom together to celebrate the end of a really nice um, successful year. And um, it's pretty busy here at this tea house. A lot of people are gathering or reuniting with their friends and relatives. So while waiting for our high tea to arrive, which took quite a while, I decided to sketch this view in front of me. So I love the view of this uh, arch-shaped doorway framing the uh, display area or the front counter area of the, of the tea house and also a table with two ladies now sitting down having a lovely time together. So I just started um, just drawing the outline of the arch shape of the doorway and then drawing the uh, console table on the right side of the uh, inside of the doorway with a little angel figure and um, some little plants displayed on the tabletop. And then the three dimensionality of the doorway by adding another curve so the seeing and translating what I see into lines and shapes is just so much fun to do. Now I'm drawing the console table on the left side and then uh, the same type of plant as the one on the right uh, with three layers of little canopies of green leaves and other small ornaments behind. Okay, so now I'm starting to draw the back view of one of the ladies sitting at the table. So she has long hair, ponytail, and um, she's uh, holding her, her food and chatting with her friend or maybe a family member. When I'm drawing people, I always like to start with the, uh, the shape of the hair first and then uh, the facial expression, uh, the eyes, the nose, and the smile in very simple lines and little curves. So when sketching people in public places, I think it's much more important to capture their um, facial expressions, really enjoying the moment at these cafes and tea houses, really being part of their environment and not uh, stress too much on the photo likeliness. Okay, so after drawing these two ladies by the doorway, now I'm recognizing the next layer. It's the shelf with the, uh, with the tea house merchandise for sale, cups and tea packages, and then some more Christmas ornaments arranged on the top part of the shelf. So some ornaments are standing out really well, like this cute little angel figure. Most of the packages, I'm just simplifying them into simple square and rectangle shapes. And now the next layer is this roll of lamps hanging down from the ceiling. Yeah, so this row of lamps are slanting slightly downwards toward the right because of uh, perspective. All right, and after that, I'm drawing this uh, 3D shape of a rectangular prism of a column uh, floating from the back wall, and then the wreaths hanging on it, and one more lamp joining the row of friends, and then writing down the name of the place. It's called the Secret Garden Tea. All right, so now our afternoon tea treats have arrived. So now I'm gonna spend about um, 10 to 15 minutes to draw and paint the uh, afternoon tea display stand and my cup of tea in the front. So I ordered black tea, I think it's Earl Grey. Um, and then the very quickly simplification of the florals inside and outside the cup. All right, so now I'm going back to the top of the uh, high tea stand frame to draw the ribbon and I divided it into three layers of metallic bars, starting to draw the first layer of dish holding the sweets. Yeah, so each of these little items are in the cute shapes of little cubes, triangular prisms, and also short little cylinders. Um, I see two with a little gingerbread man on it and then drawing the bottom of the dish and the circular frame of the metallic bar. Now moving on to the middle layer. These are the savory items. Yeah, the little buns with uh, curry flavored uh, stuffings in there and also the scones with cream and jam. Yeah, and then connecting the sections of the vertical bars here on the right hand side. 
Now moving on to the bottom layer. Uh, these are the little sandwiches and croissants with stuffings in there. Again, I see them as little sphere shapes and triangular prisms as um, those little wedges of sandwiches behind. Yeah, most of them are little burger shapes, which are really cute. And then drawing the bottom circular frame, the legs of the stand in swirls. Final polish and accentuation. So that's it for the drawing part of the afternoon tea traits and my cup of Earl Grey. Now it's time to have fun painting watercolors. So I'm gonna start with diluted yellow ochre for my tea and uh, wet onto wet a little bit of orange brown. Most of these pastries have the first layer of diluted yellow ochre. Yeah, so yellow ochre is a very handy color for painting pastries. Even with just one layer of wash, uh, these little items, they look kind of real. So when painting watercolors, it's very important to be really clear of each layer's color that you're painting on rather than randomly blending on too many colors together. All right, so for this layer, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. Yeah, so these little buns in the middle on the bottom layer, they have a nice cherry blossom color. So I just used diluted red to get this uh, really nice pinky color. And now I'm doing wet onto wet some yellow orange. Yeah, so to make anything look real or three dimensional, we have to level up the contrast by adding the second and third layer. So these values I'm adding on are mostly yellow oranges and orange browns. Yeah, and these cute little gingerbread men are just uh, pure burnt sienna. And they stand out really well with a heavier value. And then lime green mixed with a little bit of uh, lemon yellow for these lettuce leaves in between the buns on the bottom layer, just to have some cool colors in between these warm yellows and oranges. Yeah, so I just love how these greens and strong pinks and the browns standing out really nicely from the light yellows of the pastries, just making this uh, little painting look a little stronger with higher contrast. In terms of stronger and weaker tones and also warm and cold colors. Yeah, and painting in these florals on the uh, on the dishes and on the cup with quick dashes of leftover green on my palette. And now it's time to paint the metallic frame and the swirls. So I like to mix my own gray with cobalt blue, royal purple, and a little bit of green. And same for the inside and outside of my teacup. Yeah, kind of a bluish gray. So for some parts of the metallic frame, I just left it unpainted of a white spot. Uh, a pretty easy way to show that it's a shiny metallic surface. All right, so I'm gonna sip my tea and enjoy the treats first before going back to more drawing of the interior sketch and the coloring. Yeah, so we finished almost everything and I'm pretty full now. Um, it's time to go back to finishing the drawing of this interior sketch. So now moving on to the next layer behind the shelf uh, is actually these floating shelves attached to the back wall. So just getting these vertical and horizontal lines done and smelling tea and also listening to these people chattering around me. All right, and just having fun adding in these little items like their uh, teapots, teacups, yeah, these are looking really cute from a distance and also packages of tea. They also have these individual pastry items for us to buy. And lastly, I'm just gonna add on these small thingies like little lamps and air conditioning stuff hanging on the ceiling, writing down the date and the date, it was Tuesday, December the 19th of 2023. Now it's time to uh, paint the atmosphere in with watercolors. So I just wetted the area with clear water and then spreading out this diluted um, lemon yellow mixed with yellow ochre for the indoor lighting that gives a really nice cozy feel 
to this interior. Yeah, so for all cafe and restaurant sketches, I very often start with this first layer with a warm uh, luminosity of yellow glow for the walls and the ceilings and uh, very much everything. The yellow is stronger wrapping around the lamps. Okay, the next step is for the crashing of warm and cold colors. It's now for some cold blues and purples to uh, get onto the paper and in contrast with the yellow. So in this way, the painting will look more dramatic with a good balance of warm and cold colors. Okay, and just keep adding this for the archway over here for the door. These seemingly gray areas are not just a dead gray to me. They are very often bluish or purplish grays that I always mix from scratch uh, by mixing cobalt blue, royal purple, and then just a little bit of green. Yeah, just painting in these gaps and also under each layer of the shelf where the shadows are and this nice um, old fashioned green for the front counter and the same green for the wreaths which um, are echoing each other and same for the little canopies of the, uh, the plants on the left and right. Yeah, so we need some of these evergreen colors and also the warm festive reds that these two ladies are actually wearing and give their bodies a bit more three-dimensionality by using a stronger red and also a bit of leftover purple painting in their skin colors with a mix of orange and red diluted and one of that lady there is blonde she's wearing like a black sweater under the red vest and then painting the warm yellow tabletop Okay, now it's time for the final polishing stage. So some small areas needs to be accentuated with a heavier value like these um, angel figurines and also the little canopies of the plants here in the front on the left and right. Um, I think they need a bit more heavier greens. Okay, I think that's it for this sketching process. Having a wonderful time with my mom here, having afternoon tea. So happy holidays, everyone. I will see you again pretty soon before the New Year's. Have a wonderful and heartwarming time reuniting and gathering with your family and other loved ones. Bye.